Welcome to Disturbed Season 7, Episode 3, Neighbors from Hell. I love this name. I thought this was great. Uh, I'm Rob Southgate. With me is Chris Mao. And uh, on our chat room, we've already got Sally Noble with us. So hi, Sally. How you doing? Hi, Sally. Uh, so before we get into the show, because I'm sure we've got a lot of t- to talk about, uh, I wanted to mention a tweet that we got. Uh, here we go. There was one tweet that we got in this week. I don't know. It, it was pretty slow for us. It says, what if Allie is faking being scared and pretending she sees clowns to manipulate Ivy for some reason with a little hmm emoji that's from gwen stevens uh gwen you know it's funny because i've seen this same thought come up uh when you wrote it it was the first i'd seen it and that's why I, I responded you know like hey that's a really interesting idea and then i was watching the show and i was thinking you know i i don't know but i've seen it now pop up on a bunch of chat rooms i've seen it on some facebook groups uh i think it's uh, american horror story is my life or something one of those groups uh it's an interesting thought, you know, you, part of you says no, but then for me, I was getting kind of a uh, fight club vibe when I thought that. So yeah. I don't know. What did you think, Chris? I, I think that goes, that supports the, excuse me, the, the fight club where I think, I think Allie's the one in control. I personally do. Um, or I think that's one good plausible theory where she is the one manipulating all of this and she's playing the, you know, maybe she's schizophrenic, maybe whatever, and it's got that. Do you think she's thing. aware? Do you think she's aware? Do you think that it's that no. she really is but like multiple personalities doing, making this happen? I think the personalities are coming together because, as we're going to talk about, Allie takes a big, I think, emotional step at the end of this this episode about things with her life, and um, I, I think I think they're converging. So maybe you know, maybe she's just really messed up and they're using her, or maybe. She's the one who's in charge or is kind of in charge, but I don't know. Okay. We'll have to see. That that was one of I think that was one of the things we talked about in the very first our very first podcast. But you know, I have conversations in my head. So <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe right. that was there. So so um I'm gonna have to struggle with this one a little bit only because I watched it last night. Mm-hmm. And since then I've had the uh quiz review from hell in my master's program uh all finance class we covered four chapters in the last two hours <laughs> my brain is mush so sure. uh chris you're gonna have to kind of guide us through this as you say stuff i'm sure i'll remember all sorts of things but i have another question yes uh oh a little bit of business follow us on facebook look up disturbed podcast follow us on twitter at disturbed pod um there you go. We have a podcast marathon coming up October 7th. We are not on it as Disturbed this time unless somebody drops out, which is what happened one other time and Disturbed ended up going live at the podcast marathon. You'll be able to watch that marathon, though. It's 13 hours, October 7th. It's at Chris's place, the Blue Box in Elgin. So you can come see us live there, uh, Elgin, Illinois. Uh, if you can't get there, YouTube live. We will be right here where you're watching this. We will stream all 13 hours, unless something goes wrong. Uh, Also, we have a second (laughs) concurrent marathon going on on the Capes and Lunatics uh, YouTube channel. And we'll put all links to all that stuff on our Facebook page. We'll have it on our website also. And the lineup has become incredible. And we still have people trying to get in. I don't know, man. This is turning into quite quite the thing. So I just wanted to plug away, get all that stuff out there. Uh, follow me at our Southgate, follow the show at disturbed pod, follow Chris at uh, blue box cafe, one seven, six on social media or www.thebluboxcafe.com. Okay. Now, sorry. Now, and I'm sure yeah. Sally will be watching us because that's what you do. Right, Sally. <laughs> uh, so I have to ask you a question before we start. Yes. I have quite the clown story. Would you like it now or at the end? Go ahead now. Let's entertain us. You want it now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to so get a lot do, of this wrong. Do like, do like half of it and then half like a halfway through. As, I, as I don't know. Just do it all. It's okay. No. Do you want me to do half? Because here, here's the deal. So I went on a, uh, a, a ghost walk the other night. And uh, Orion Cooling was doing it for his wife's birthday. And he does these. He, he hosts these ghost walks and it was really great 
And towards the end of the night, we ended up, this is in Chicago, we ended up at Rose Hill Cemetery. Cool. And Rose Hill, uh, those of you uh, that listen to this probably are familiar with that name. You may not know it until I tell you what it is. It's where last year, I believe the very first sighting of the creepy clown fad started. Uh, if you look up Rose Hill Cemetery, look up clown, you'll see footage of this guy. The gates are closed. And these people were standing at the gates looking in like, ooh, you know, it's haunted and all this. And then all of a sudden this clown in a yellow clown outfit pops mm-hmm. up and like waves at them and then trots away. Now, here's the weird thing about this. I thought this was an isolated incident. I heard they had never caught the guy. Orion said it took place over the course of like two weeks. People right. kept spotting him and they still never caught this guy. Right. So whoever that guy was, what a jerk. Okay. Mm-hmm. But still it's an, it's an interesting footnote, especially when you consider what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, so then he goes into, I told you, I'm only going to give you half the story and then we'll finish with the last half. He started talking about, I think it's in Woodlawn, Illinois. There is a cemetery that has, it, it's like the circus performer cemetery. Have you ever heard of this? I have not, but it sounds intriguing. Well, Martha and I went there. Uh, on a first date? No. Yeah, yeah. We're, but we were working on a project um, that we're still working on. Uh, but we went there to see this. And they have these big stone statues of these elephants. Uh, the reason this was set up was to have a cemetery for circus performers. There are two in the United States. One of them is right here in Woodlawn near Chicago. And right after it was opened, they actually needed it because there was a horrific train accident. Okay. Okay. I mean, this is in the, I think it was the, the early 1900s, if I get it right, real early. Uh, But it was a horrific accident, two trains going full speed. One of them, the, the, uh, the, the, the engineer fell asleep and the other one, uh, the track wasn't switched. So they went full on full speed into each other. Boom. I mean, you can imagine the carnage uh, just, and it was, it was circus people on one of them. So uh, just horrible animals and performers and, you know, families, like there are some people that were still not identified and, you know, just horrible. Right. right. So that's the first part of the story. It's very sad. Uh, and, and in reality, if you go there, uh, on the memorial of this happening, circus performers still go there uh, mm-hmm. to pay tribute. And people are still buried there. Uh, I mean, getting buried there currently. But it's interesting. When I was talking to somebody at the cemetery, they told me that they said it is strange because some people come in full costume. Sure. So they said, you know, the, the nightmare of clowns walking around they're all walking around the cemetery, but he's, they said it's very, you know, somber and there's, you know, but for the outside person that doesn't know what this is, it would be pretty weird. Right. So the story Orion told, he told a little bit about that, but the, the, uh, there were some kids that were there that witnessed it and these two boys. And and, uh, this was a story that was actually in the paper after the fact. And then it, it was, uh, there were quotes and everything. So he's like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of truth to this. Okay. And these kids, they witnessed it. And what they did was they were pretty little and they saw when this happened, a couple of clowns in the full outfit just get thrown like ragdolls into the air. Right. The, bam. And they just, well, they're like on fire and they get thrown and, and they're just like twisting. And, and the one, younger one starts laughing uh, because what else does he do? I mean, he's, he's freaked out, right? but he doesn't, he, he's young. He can't control his emotions or whatever. And it's a clown. And he just like naturally starts laughing. And uh, the other one is like kind of looking at amazement and everything. And, and somebody there uh, that was on site turned to him and started yelling at him. Like, this is nothing to laugh at. What is wrong with you two? And it's like really like horrible, right? And the, the, their dad, you know, grabs him and like, let's get out of here. Uh, he doesn't want him to see anything. And one of the things that that they did see was there was a, one of the clowns landed and it was on its stomach. And the, uh, they were, they were looking at this before they get taken away. And uh, somebody like pushed the, the body over to see if the person was alive and the face was, you know, half clown and the rest was just gone. So, I mean, you're talking like on fire and just like, oh my gosh, right? Horrible story. 
That's part one. Okay. Wait till you hear part two. Dun, dun, dun. So, clowns. Yes. Let's talk about this episode, Chris. Speaking of, so neighbors um, from hell. You know, and, and it's very aptly named because I don't think there's a real winner. <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of hellish behavior going on on both sides. Um, and I and I thought it was good because we finally got into I think a little bit of the meat of what's going on. Um, yeah, and I don't know how you felt about it. it. Was good. I mean, I think we learned more about Doctor Vincent and kind of what. Kind of. I think he's a quack. I don't think he's a real doctor, but I mean, I, know, I, I think you're right. I, I, think, I think it's just like there's a, something else going on with this guy. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously something weird because he's talking to he, he's talking to Allie later, and he has like these emotion buttons, like you know you'd have on your fridge. I'm feeling grumpy today, and he kind of like changes it depending on her mood during the conversation and it's a little weird. And then the opening scene where he's talking to the couple and he introduces yet another phobia. What is it? Fair, uh, fair, uh, fair fuss of majors. That's fair uh, of majors. Yeah, yes. It's fear of seventies feathered hair. Yes. Um, you, you obviously know, have it. You've got the yeah, wet look right now. I do have the wet look right now. That's called sweat, but yes. You know, it, it, and it's like the girl was trapped in a locked in like the liquor cabinet by her dad when she was younger. And she has this fear of, enclosed spaces or whatever but you know after the couple sees the doctor they come home and guess what yeah they, they right get by the they, get, and, they get put in boxes it's right. like all of her fears are coming real right. um i wonder if he's doing like hypnotic suggestion to make this stuff happen sure I including don't know. the clown stuff for for her yeah i, I wonder I, if there's a degree of that going on well, because he uh, talks about. Kelly like, said that she agrees with us. There is something going on with well, this guy. Like, there is he's totally. Like, he's like facing your phobias, and you overcame them. He goes, and what did he call it? He called it. Um, uh, I, I, I'm I'm losing the verbiage because I didn't write it down. I thought it was important. I should have. But he he talks about facing them and um, acclimating to them. So yeah. it's like it's okay to be like scared, and it just was very weird. Like it, it doesn't seem like the proper line of treatment. But what do I know? I'm not a trained professional, but he's creepy. And then, oh, but you play one on this podcast. I do. But then, but then you, you know, you get to the part where he's talking to Allie and he's just like got this maniacal look on his face and <laughs> yeah. doesn't stop her from doing pretty much the craziest thing I've ever heard of somebody doing. But it goes along with another line of my, my thinking of the show. But okay. so, so that's how that, that's how the show starts and then gets instantly nutty from there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, so, so this therapist, let's, let's dive in a little bit more. I can't tell, I can't tell if like I had that thought of hypnotic suggestion because of the way that played out, making it so that he, so that it's playing on our fears. Not that it's not happening, Mm -hmm. but that it's, it's not, I shouldn't say it this way. It's, 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 it's more like instead of hypnotic suggestion, it's like, like he's tweaking the fear to make it so much worse. Sure. You know, like he's a he's a a sadist for for psychological trauma. Or did he train possibly? Did he see Kai and kind of train him into this? You find somebody's fear and you exploit it and oh, take that's a thought. Of it? Um, you know, because what if, just, what if he's just in cahoots with Kai? What right. if it's what if the cult is them? Is this idea of of drawing fear? And right. playing off fear. What if they're the cult members? Could it's, it's not political, as we were led to believe. It's uh-huh. not. It's not anything other than the reason Kai reacted that way is I now have a tool for fear. Like sure. they they just thrive on being sadist, but it's a it's like a a mental sadism. Yeah, but I don't. I don't I've never gotten that it's a political thing with Kai. I've always gotten from him that it's a this is an opportunity. No, but he's using it. He's using the right. political situation. But I never got it. It was like he was a Trump guy because I don't think he acts. I hate to say acts like that, but he's never said anything along those lines. But he specifically said this is a, an opportunity for chaos. So, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, again, they talk. There's a couple of pinky scenes in this episode, which are great, um, which lead to some interesting things at the end. And we can talk about those. But. I mean, there's, you know, there's a whole lot going on. So I, I don't you know, I, I don't know. Dr. Vincent, he's skeevy. I mean, you know, he looks 
like an old guy trying to look young. He's got the very prototypical like 60s kind of setup in his office and he's very kind of, you know, I don't know. And then when she made that comment when Allie talks to him and uh uh what do you mean you know, when, he's, when he's talking to Allie and he's just and, and sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. Um, that's okay. No, but <laughs> lie. Yeah, sorry, you sent me a message. I'm like, hey, no, that's cool. Um when when he's talking to Allie and uh he you know, like is telling her what she needs to do. And like, you know, I, like he tells her that maybe she should, should spend some time in a hospital. And she's like, no way. It almost felt like he was egging her on to do that. Did you get that? Yeah. That, that yeah. I kind of had that so. too. Once again, I can't, I can't tell. I did get that too, but I, but then I lost it because it, it didn't seem to fit the narrative that I was putting in my head. Right. So I can't, I really can't tell what's going on. And, and I can't tell. When Kai does this, yeah. is, he hip, is he hypnotizing? Well, I think he's. I think he's adding ceremony to his thing about the trust. I think that's like his cultish thing, where he's like, "This is you and I talking. It's a. It's safe for you to say whatever you want, and I'm going to give you. You know, like the thing where he talks to Meadow, and he's like, "This is my time, and this is a revolution. You're not going to act like a jerk or make fun of this situation." Right. You need to be serious. So I think that I take that as a very serious kind of uh, ceremonial part of the whole process. Yeah. I, you know, maybe, maybe it is just ceremony. May, you know, it, it might be, I, I would not be surprised if we don't see the doctor right. do that with the pinkies well, at some point. As soon as that happens, you know that he's either in on it or a he, cult member or they're part of this. Or maybe he just trained Kai. Maybe Kai learned it from him how to deal with his fears. Or, said, or what if he planted all this in Kai? Right. Like if he's really the, the mastermind and he's planting sure. this, Kai has gone off the deep end with it. Fine. He's right. all right with that. Maybe he's causing chaos on that end. Because, um, what, because when he addresses, the doctor addresses the situations, he does it in the very politically correct, oh, well, these are awful things that are happening. But he doesn't specifically say those things that are happening to you are the awful things. He's right. kind of just like, Oh man, the situation's really bad. Well, is it the situation with the murders and what the pro the things going on? Is it the protesters or is it the situation and how people are being? So yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's yeah, a lot yeah. of I think there's a lot of things being said that I think we're going to look back and go, man, they didn't mean anything we thought in the beginning. So I think that's been true of every season we've done together. Sure, absolutely. So I think we throw a lot of stuff out there and get. 10% right, but that 10% is glorious. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and that could also be what's happened with Oz. Yeah. You know, because Oz saw the therapist too. If that this, therapist planted some of this stuff in Oz, it's why yeah. Oz is seeing all these things. Well, didn't Winter do uh pinky thing with Oz? Yeah. Last year. I mean, so, I mean, he's he's in there, but he also might just be a kid that's getting you know, I hate to say manipulated. He might just be in there being a kid and, you know, she's using him as, as a tool. Cause I, I think winter is obviously because how many dumb well, winter is definitely there? deep in right. this somehow. Well, hey, I, I let the guy in and said he was here for an interview. What the, I mean, how, <laughs> how many mistakes? I mean, <laughs> how about that scene? Wait a minute. How about that scene? That's, I mean, <laughs> the guy's standing there completely naked. Yeah. And they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable. And the sure. fact that there was the message sent out there and see, she goes off the deep end accusing those neighbors, but we don't know that it was those neighbors. No. It could have been winter. It could have been Kai. It could have been the therapist. It could well, have been, it well, could have been Allie herself. It could, it could have been Ivy. Because, could have been Ivy. You know what Ivy's password was on her parental lock? No. Clowns with a Z. Shout out to a little. Yo, but, yo. So Oz goes, yeah, I looked at your passwords. It's clowns with a Z. Why would she have? Why would she have clowns? Clowns at the end. I think especially she would, when she knows it terrifies Allie. Right. And why would she leave? I mean, again, going back to why the comic book with uh, the twisty, uh, twisty, she puts it in the drawer. That those are her hands. I went I back. No, that's what I'm saying. I I think that Ivy is tied into it. Well, I I don't know if she's tied into it, but she's not. Not no, no. Place. I think she's tied into it, man. 
I think she's she's tied up in it, but she may not be aware. Just like we were saying, Allie might not be aware. She may not be aware. What if what if we go back to the therapist theory and the therapist gave her this dual personality? So she has sure. no idea right. that she's doing these things, making Allie crazier. Well, and really, the, the whole point is not for, you know, domination or anything. Like, like, because really, if you watch the beginning of the series, it made you think that they were trying to like make everybody nuts. And we kept saying, why are they doing it to these two? Maybe they really are just doing it to Allie. Maybe she's their sacrifice or maybe Ivy's the sacrifice or maybe Oz is the sacrifice. Well, I mean, how about the time when the cop talks to them and Allie's kind of starting to go off the deep end and he talks to Ivy says, does your partner have any regression? And Allie's like, don't talk to me. I'm right here. Don't talk to her. I'm not crazy. Where and they're both looking at her like, yeah, you're nuts. You're nuttier than a, you know, you're nuttier than a fruitcake. And um, there's there's all sorts of stuff going on. Maybe Ivy has the clown's password because Allie is trying to confront her fear of clowns. And he talks about in that Dr. Vincent talks about that in the first scene about facing your fear, calling it out, yeah, you know, yeah. making making it afraid. So who knows? And maybe it's, maybe it's Ivy's fear projecting on Allie because Allie is so, you know, and I hate this term snowflakey, but could she have used more politically she is. white buzzwords in this episode? I mean, every scene was like her being like, I'm one of you. I'm, you know, that right. thing where she confronts the right. bug truck or whatever it is. And she's like, I want to speak to your supervisor. Who what cares? is up with that bug truck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who knows? I mean, and then when they get out and they take the mask and it's that yeah. smiley face with a cr- thing down the middle. Right. Once again, is that all hallucination or well, are they really well, doing well, something? Ivy, Ivy saw the truck, but we don't know if she saw that truck. You know what I mean? She saw something because Ivy, they were both looking at it out the window and they both saw the truck. Yeah. We both saw it twice. But does that mean it's the black truck that Allie but saw? They, just like we as viewers have seen. The ice cream truck, we saw Oz see it, and we saw, I think, right. Allie saw it, didn't she? Allie did, yes. Yeah. And then it pulled up in front of the house, didn't it? The other house. The, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but so, but there, but, I mean, are we looking at this through Allie's eyes? And that's actually because she even says it looks like a Kemlon truck, but black. Right. And so maybe it is during the day, and there's a Kemlon truck that goes by, and that those guys were actually spraying the yard, but Allie is freaking out. Because Could she be. just can't deal with it. And Could we're going to look back at it. It's going to be like, oh, it was Kemlon coming out during the day because. And where are the other neighbors? You know, everything seems <laughs> to be focused on these neighbors and sure. these two. But, I mean, I live in a neighborhood. You right. do have neighbors on other sides. There, there's got to be some neighborhood busybody that's going to walk by and see what's going on. Sure. Or that's going to come up and say, I saw that thing. Or I saw those dead birds in your yard. Like, what's up with that? There's, like, nobody there. Right. But. Billy and them. Yeah. Billy and them. Well, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Let's talk about them for a second. First of all, yes. the sombrero scene <laughs> was amazing. It was right out of difficult people. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, I thought Chevy Chase was coming to go. Was going <laughs> was, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Yes. The three of yeah. That was a great scene. Well, and the best part of that whole scene is we don't like racists in our neighborhood. Like, they've been there a day. And right. they're like yelling. It's like our neighborhood. Which well, I did like he's... how she called him out on that. Yeah. Like, but... we've lived here. What are you talking about? Yeah. Now, here's something I thought of immediately in that scene that might have been something glossed over, or it might be might be some kind of clue. Billy, I don't know what his name is on the show. It's Billy Eichner or whatever. His uh, name Harrison. Is. Will... Harrison. Harrison uh, crushed up the Taco Bell coupons yeah. and threw them in the door. That would be evidence that they were there and did this. Sure. When she told Ivy, Ivy was like, what are you talking about? She could have just picked up. Look at the, the he threw these coupons in. Right. So were they really there? I think was so. that real? Or, I, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, I, 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 I seemed I, shocked when they went over there and she punched him in the face. Well, because, I mean. I don't think that they did the thing with the guinea pig. I don't think that was them. I don't think they did either. And the smiley face, I think it's been established. And so, I mean, the whole precipice of Allie's on the side of their house too. Right. Was that they came home from 
this night with the family at the restaurant. It was nice and Oz and everybody got together. They come, the, the family comes back and there's the smiley face with the bloodshot. You know, I, I believe it's a gunshot in the middle, right? And that's bleeding. Yeah, that's, what, that that's what it looks like. Was painted on Allie and Ivy's door. And then they go and confront, they confront Harrison. Harrison in the meadow. But in between, they run in. They've decided to keep the guinea pig because Allie is trying to I, win favor with her son. Yeah, that was her. that was real was fast computer. how it went from like, hey, we're friends to she's nuts again, and then guinea pig in the microwave. Well, but I don't know if they were friends, but I think there's always been that. But they come in, and obviously, who's going to come in right at the timing and start start the microwave <laughs> with uh, with the guinea pig in it? And you know. I, I hate that part. I thought it was, I mean, it proved the point, but it was stupid. But, and then she goes over and confronts the Wiltons. How would she, th- I mean, she right. just has this animosity. I mean, I guess that happens with neighbors. I've never but been. She, it was like she went from zero to 60, but she is unstable. Yes. Or potentially unstable. Right. Uh, so that could make sense. Uh, but I, I did too. I thought that that was, I thought that was a cheap move. Right. Um, I don't know. Now they had the maybe the guinea pig was what the smiley face was for. Maybe who knows? You know, maybe mm-hmm. they were killing the guinea pig, and then and, and which would go back to the idea that it's either Allie or Ivy that's mm-hmm. doing it. Well, maybe the doctor a, knows. Her, maybe the doctor knows her phobias, and again, he's letting that go. And maybe you know, and maybe you know, we're talking about the doctor. Maybe Kai or Winter worked for the doctor and got access to all of his notes and they're using his notes to confront people who knows i mean there's there's obviously a lot more going on and maybe you know who, who knows what's gonna happen so yeah they, who know, knows? They, they use all that stuff but yeah that was that was a nutty scene and then you know in between there they do the pinky thing with kai each of them and they both you know meadow and harrison do the pinky thing and they both basically say yeah i hate my wife or i hate my husband I want them dead because yeah. I, I don't, I don't feel, I mean, obviously they're in a very awkward relationship. You know, he's gay. She's not, she's, you know, as Kai says, you're the, what is it? You're the most bleeping irritating person on the planet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, like basically saying meadow, you're just like a big lump of whatever. And you know, Harrison, you're just a, you know, gay and guy then, living with a, with a beard. And then um, here's what I'm then, wondering about that. So we had we had the scenes of was it Harrison was with the doctor and Meadow was with Kai, and then we have at the end we have Meadow gone and blood everywhere. Did did they plant something in Harrison to do well, it? Is Harrison manipulated in this? Well, is no, he is he the alley of that house? The way I took it is, is that Kai did the pinky ceremony thing with each of them and okay. Meadow didn't take it seriously. She made the joke where she's like, well, I think the real housewife has a drinking problem. And he got mad at her. And okay. then okay. Where he said, I'm going to help you. Um, and then, you know, so Meadow said, I- I'm going to die alone. And then Harrison goes, I want her dead. And they took Harrison's desire and, and, killed, her. and killed her and took her because or did they? Are we going to see her pop up later? Which is possible. No, I think she's done because she's she, done. I think they they set the table that she's annoying and she's really just there to be an antagonist. And I think there's plenty of other antagonists now. Now that Allie sure. and Ivy are kind of having some issues. Um, well, they they could make her. They could bring her back and have her be like disfigured under those one of those clown masks too. Because yeah. we haven't seen anybody take a clown mask off. What if they're all disfigured under there, like sure. Twisty was? Right. Maybe, maybe, but I think, you know, I think they're, I mean, in in that first scene, we didn't see the three-faced one. We didn't see the big nose guy. Right. We didn't We're see seeing the one, one with the hands. We see the one with the hands, and I'm going to almost bet dollars to donuts that's winter. I'm just going to call that right now. Because Are I, you? Wow. Because, I mean, but you know, very there, handsy. there were, there were two, two, two girls and two guys. Yeah. Now, in the first one, there seemed like there are six. I'm wondering if this couple... Maybe it was part of it, and then they killed them. I don't know. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what what I'm going to try and keep track of the clowns now and see yeah. who comes because who, who's there when and right who's yeah, there yeah. When and what's going on because I think it might change and maybe you know maybe the Wiltons were clowns and now they're not anymore and it'll be interesting to see if something changes. 
Yeah, we might have to keep track of keeping track of the clowns. Right. Maybe Ivy's one of them. Who knows? I mean, you know, Ivy's gone a lot. She's at yeah, work we, a lot. We might actually have to go back and mark who's there when clowns are and who isn't. Although nobody's there when the clowns are, technically. Right. Yeah, but I mean, the, the you have, might be able to time out like we didn't see where so and so was during this time, or right. these clowns are here when when the Wiltons are are clearly not there. You know, right. there might be something to that. Well, I think Kai is the three nose. It's either Kai or the Doctor is the three nose clown. He seems yeah, I think so the, too. He seems to be the leader, and I think Winter is the hands head and the head clown. And then I, after that, I, I think. Clown. But I also think that that maybe maybe the doctor is the one dressing as twisty, because if you go back to that thing when when we know there was a clown in the house, we, because we saw the three nosed one, right? With Oz, I don't think that was a dream. I think he, they were really in the house. Somebody was dressed as twisty. It's not twisty. Twisty's dead, right? But it's somebody dressed as twisty. So we we saw the play out of twisty the fake twisty earlier right. so now whenever we see twisty we're assuming it's a dream right what if what if that assumption is completely wrong what if what if the you know they they laid twisty into this kid's subconscious they got him the toy they they got him the the comics and then the doctor shows up as twisty i don't think it's kai it's probably right. it could be the doctor yeah, I mean maybe. Or Kathy Bates. Where's Kathy Bates? Yeah, oh, she's not going to be in this one. So yeah, we had a uh, McDermott, Dol Rooney, whatever sighting yeah. today, which was yeah. great. He was absolutely horrible as a newscaster. It was great. It yeah, was so it good. was great. Because I mean, between him and I love Adina Porter's horrible street reporting. Oh my it, gosh, it's, it's it's so bad. It's like you know. It, it's like cable it's so bad. <laughs> it's, it's great, and she's. It's like you can almost see her like reading it. It's awesome because she's a very talented actress. Oh so, uh, yeah, I mean, we've we've seen plenty of her, and in... we've seen plenty of her and stuff. Yeah, I mean, she was great in newsroom and great in other things, and then you see her in this, and you're just like, she's just hitting it out of the park with the yeah. bad TV reporter. Yeah. Oh, and the the you know the neighborhood is in fear. It's like just making up crap to say. It's, it's yeah. Great. Yeah. So what else did, what else happened in this episode? We had, we had, uh, this was kind of a transition episode. There was a lot of stuff laid in there. We right. had, uh, um, Meadow, we believe murdered. We yeah. had the truck. We covered that. Yeah. We had, uh, oh, we had Ivy find out about Allie right. and winter. Although right. even that was weird. It was like, okay, it's on his computer. We saw Ivy, er, you know, we talked winter mess with the computer. Right. Uh, so maybe she planted that. Well, no, uh, it's Oz, very likely. But Oz, Oz said he changed the parental controls, that he did it because he knew the password. Yeah, right. but he couldn't get it to close. They couldn't get it to right. stop. And that makes me wonder if she did something. Somebody right. had to have done something that for Oz not to be able to even just shut it off. Sure. And Ivy seemed legitimately freaked out by that. She seemed legitimately upset. Uh, whether she's in on it or not, she might not be in on that portion of it. Right. And it might be like, and, and that might be how it was presented to her. Like, like, you know, Allie is not stable. She's not who you think she is. We need to do this fear therapy on her or something. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And it, I mean, from having seen the scene as it happened, like we did our, from our perspective, and yeah. then seeing the videotape, I mean, Obviously, it was the damning ten seconds. Oh yeah, but, yeah. I mean, if if Ivy Ivy had already built up a lot of and not animosity, but a lot of angst about the relationship, and she even said that little part where she's like, "You're not the person I fell in love with," and right. I, you know, she's obviously been dealing. Didn't with, she say that earlier too? Right when they went over to the when they were coming back from the Harrisons after, after yes. the will, where she punched her, she's like, "You're not the person that I fell in love with. You're different." Yeah. And she had yeah. said that at another time before. I think she said um, that in the first episode. Right. When she, said when she was acting all weird and she said something like, hey, you're not the person I fell in love with. So once again, going back to the Ivy is shady idea, right. uh, could be. In fact, well, Sally wrote, Ivy is shady. So yeah. well, believe it. On. Believe on. it. She sent over a worker who was a pretty good worker of hers to their house. Right. And he gets shot by her, her wife 
and she has almost no animosity about it. The cops right. like, well, you have every reason to shoot him. It's okay in Michigan. Case What's closed. up with the cop? What's well, up with the cop? You mean besides hanging out with? You know, he's well. He's one of the clowns. He probably is one of the clowns, and he's him and Harrison are hooking up, obviously, because that's what Meadow said in the pink. We're shirt. led to believe that he's a cop, but we don't know that, right? We don't know who this guy is. Yeah, but he's pulled up in. He's pulled up in. Doesn't I mean, matter. We don't know who this guy is, right? Well, isn't he? Isn't the first time they the guy says some detective is going to help you? But even if he's a cop or not, he's obviously involved. Or no, oh, he's involved, right? He he's obviously in there. So yeah, yeah, he's definitely know. involved. So I, I think he's another one that's going to play out. We're going to get a much better story out of him. Um, I've been reading a lot of stuff where people are kind of busting on this season and they're complaining. I think that's common for this show, right? Um, especially this. This is very confusing and at yeah. times gratuitous to a point that it it could be off-putting to some people sure. but i'm finding a lot to pay attention to here well i think there's i think they're addressing number one this show is really hitting home right now i mean i've never met a more topically not sensitive but i mean just timing wise right the, the what what is happening on tv is similar to things that are happening right now um, right. It's very, it's very pertinent. It's very pertinent. It's very relative yeah. relevant, and it's a little rough. And I think they are addressing, I think they're really attacking the white, you know, the white establishment. I think we've, I've, I've addressed that in every podcast we've done where they're really slapping down white privilege. They're really, yeah. they're really addressing it. I mean, today they spent, or this episode, I think they spent a good four or five minutes of airtime addressing it and how stupid it looks and how bad it looks with Ivy, who I think is <clears throat> the way they're portraying her or the way she thinks of herself. I think she thinks of herself as a really, really good person. But like when she does the, I'm an American citizen. You need to tell me who you are. I hate to say, it, what right is that? Of yeah. Anything? Right. I mean, but I mean, but we, I don't want to say we all do it, but we all feel about that sometimes because right. we walk into, you know, I'm a business owner. You own businesses. There were people that treated you like that. What right is that other than you just feel that you're privileged to do that or right, that you right. can treat other people like that? And the things that she said, I want to talk to your supervisor. You can't do this. I want to, you know, I want to see your permit. I want to see that. I mean, I think there's a lot of it. When she goes in and confronts the protesters, which what did she think? I mean, that's totally like, well, I can explain it to these people. No, they're pissed off that you shot. Somebody who's <laughs> right. uh, an immigrant. Right. She and, was going to do that. That was crazy. Like, and, and, and then, of really course, they attack her. And it's like, what were you thinking? Exactly. I mean, after they were protesting. And then she's like, I'm one of you. You have nothing I'm in common with you. you. have nothing in common with them except you're a human being, which may right. be the only thing that you have in common with them. Because you're obviously pretty wealthy, whether it's your money or Ivy's money. I would bet that it's, I bet it, would bet that it's Allie's money in this relationship. Um, they own this. Yeah, I, I would bet. Th- I would bet it is too. Right, because I mean, I don't say she seems successful. That's just an assumption I'm making, and maybe it's off base. But she's the one. She's the sugar mama of the group. Allie is, or Ivy is, the smart, you know, one with the idea for the restaurant or whatever. Blah blah blah. Um, they they have nothing in common with. Her. I mean, that house is unbelievable. I mean, yeah. like, when Kathleen and I are watching, she's like, we well, even the right. restaurant. I'm like, right. holy moly, that yeah, is- I mean money it's ridiculous but it's a very kind of you you would find that in a more posh right posh suburb or part of town not you know not you know but it sure seems like it's owned by two people usually if you have something like that you have a collective of people that own something like that because that's a lot of money in there it's a lot of work i mean that's a ton that's a ton of work yeah all that stuff i mean you look at it you're like holy cow the first time i saw it i'm like how how could you run this? It, right. it would be it would be nutty. Um, so there's a lot of that, and I and I believe that the I, I think a lot of people are uncomfortable by this. this Especially now, show. she's down to employees. Yes, at least <laughs> well, and her partner isn't working very much because right. I, Although did she before? She was the front. She was she was the one at the the counter. Yeah, but that's, but but you know that's an important. That's I'm saying that's an important role, but what I'm saying is there is a lot of other work going on there and i have a feeling 
Allie was the the face of the place. I don't right. think she because she doesn't seem to be super involved in any of it, no. other than she was like the greeter and she loved people and right. you know, which is kind of weird too because she seems to have so many phobias in that. Like I I wonder how she could function in that role. Sure. Well, but you she, know? Seems, she seems to be that type of person. Maybe that's what she is. I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Many, maybe we haven't earned enough and maybe it's assumptions. But, I'm not sure. But there, you know, there's a ton of stuff going on with that. And it's just, it, it's, you know, I, I, I would bet that we're going to look back and look at the story and see this kind of resentment has been, you know, the, the division between them has been growing for a while where there, there feels like there's an inequity in the partnership where Ivy is doing all this work and Allie is the one yeah. kind of doing the front. Cause I, I, I mean, I can understand that and I can, I don't want to say I can personally relate, but I could see how that happens. Right. I mean, I've, I've worked at places where I thought I'm doing all the work. And, well, that, that's how you can relate. I've worked places like that too. And, and, you know, we've all been in that situation, so I can understand that. Yeah, and it, it, it becomes rough. So that that might be part of the genesis over overall what's going on and how Allie and Ivy's relationship. At least from her part of the storyline. Right. Yeah. Exactly, and see how it goes. And, you know, I'm still not convinced that Ivy and Winter didn't have something going on. And I, I, I'm i going to, I won't say go out on a limb, but we might go back and say, you know, Ivy and Winter had something going on. And she's mad that Allie and Winter had something going on. And or maybe it, she set it up. Yeah, she could she could have been involved, but I think she, you know, maybe that's all part of the plot to get her to drive her over the edge and for her to get everything. So, yeah. Who knows? I, 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 yeah, who know who knows what's going on with that? So did we miss anything? Um I, I don't think we missed much, but let me go take a look at it. Um, what about Oz made the comment about um I wish you could leave I wish I could say my goodbyes to you saying that to uh, Alex yeah. about the, you know, the part with the guinea pig. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm trying to look at other stuff that maybe we missed. Yeah, that I don't know. I mean, that might be a, a byproduct of what's going on with him in winter. That might be a byproduct of him just being angry at her. Sure. Um, he, be it's, he, and it's also been brought to his attention that you have two moms and he might be like dealing with those emotions we don't know i mean that, sure. that might be all that is um yeah, but some like some that. adapt to that real well and some you know and especially at about his age they start questioning those things and that might be what he's he's right. like witter is putting those seeds in, of doubt in his head and he's going who is my mom and why do i have the two of you and you're not you're the the one who's bringing a lot of you know craziness into the house well sure and then harrison made a comment of like he should have a male influence yeah you know, like harrison he, Right. Yeah. There's too much. Well, I mean, there's too much testosterone and or estrogen and what would they say, lesbianism over there for him. Yeah. Great. I mean, you know, he was just being insulting, especially coming from a gay guy, which right. I found very, again, very kind of ironic. Um, not that it's not, but it was very, it was very kind of weird. But you know, he could. <laughs> there was that comment he made when Winter says, "Who's your mom?" He goes, "I'm supposed to say that I come from a loving family of two women or whatever." And right. So yeah, he, he said it. He said it kind of like he's been coached. Right. Well, and he didn't say it with much conviction. He was kind of like, "Oh, this is what I'm supposed to say." Not right. like, "Hey, I love." But it's obvious that he loves both of his mothers. It's very obvious that he does. Um, but then you know the scene when they're at the restaurant and they're kind of, you know, getting a little bit more romantic and they're having like a good time. He seemed a little bit uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Didn't you? Didn't you get that feeling? I don't know. I maybe that too. Maybe that's. But just then maybe maybe it's just that. Like, I'm sure if Martha and I are having a little bit of a romantic moment, you know, at dinner or whatever, Molly would be uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. So it could it could just be that. She'd call it could just be the pressure of all this weirdness going on. Sure. I mean, and there's a lot going on, so. Yeah. And, and is Oz really there? No, I'm teasing. So, <laughs> Is there a red doorknob every time Oz appears? Yes. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I don't have anything else in this episode, but I got, I got a second half of a story. Are you ready for it? Yes, let's hear the second half of the story. So, okay. And now the rest of the story. Okay. Oh, so, and and he actually got this, or Ryan got this from, it's like a, a ghost story, but it was in the newspaper. Uh, he was going to send it to me. So as soon as he sends it to me, I'll give you a link. Uh, I'll put it in the show notes for this uh, crazy story. But uh, basically the guy and his kids went home. The kids kept having night terrors then. 
Okay. What a surprise, right? They saw these clowns. They saw this one burned and all this. Uh, they're having these night terrors. And uh, the the one kid, I, I might get some of this wrong, uh, but they heard like in the middle of the night, like banging on the door. And the father went down and was like, what is going on here? Like his kid, the night terror wakes up, puts him back to bed, banging on the door. He goes downstairs looks outside he's like you know he you know looks through the thing and he sees a full on clown out there right okay. banging on the door and he's like what is this clown starts banging starts laughing right uh-huh. and he's going leave leave my property he goes upstairs he gets a gun he gets a shotgun and uh this clown like breaks through the door and he shoots. The clown doesn't go down. He doesn't know if he hits it or whatever. He's he's assuming he did, but he doesn't know. Clown doesn't go down. Things still like coming at him and like laughing. It seems very horror movie-ish, right? right? He goes upstairs. The kids are screaming. He gets in their room and he barricades the door. And the thing is like just pounding on the door, laughing. And he's just like, I, I don't even know what to do. And this is like way back before like they could call anybody, right? right? No phones. And uh, basically, it kept up for the rest of the night. Oh, my gosh. And uh, R.I. made a good point. He goes, well, I don't know why they didn't jump out the window. And then he goes, but I also don't know. Maybe they were on a third floor or something. Right. Uh, they were in the room. It couldn't get in. So maybe they were just like, I'm going to sit here with a shotgun facing the door and pray that it doesn't come in. You know, mm-hmm. uh, when uh, sun came up the next morning, it went silent. And they they were like. What happened? Uh, they waited it out a little bit, heard nothing. Finally, the father went out into the, you know, like opened the door. Uh, I'm sure he was like, you know, uh, with the gun, uh, opened the door, went out, and like everything was trashed in the house. Uh, mm-hmm. Things were just knocked over, dishes broken, furniture ripped. Uh, they could see, you could see where the shotgun blast had happened. And, uh, no sign of the clown that was it and that was the the story that they printed was that they came and they saw the house in shambles and everything and this is the story that that the father told and it's one of these weird like you go yeah no way right but maybe it's a demon story if you believe in that stuff sure you know there it was maybe it was twisty it's a good story though i mean like standing outside of, of uh you know rose hill hearing this story you're like yeah this is this is a messed up story. Yeah. And 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 the other point about that is this all happened in and around Chicago. And then you realize Chicago has quite the history with oh yeah, clowns. And this was kind of the first story of that. Right. It's after the Chicago fire, the city's rebuilding, it's growing exponentially, and then there's this weird story and then you realize, you know, years later you've got, you know, we've got everybody's favorite clown, yeah. Bogo. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, and then you also had the other everybody's favorite clown. Chicago is the epicenter of Bozo, right? Who is the right. you know the clown? He is the the father figure clown that people aren't afraid of. So it it really makes you wonder: like, is there something in the in the soil here? Sure, you know that's involved with this, and and maybe that's something they're playing with in the show too. Or does it? I mean, you know. I always think that you know, you have that stuff in your underlying conscience that like, Hey, this is a town of clowns. So weird people are going to glom onto that just as much as normal right. people. And they right. might say, Hey, I'm nutty, but I'm going to use it as a clown because that's what I'm going to stick with. But you're right. I mean, especially at different times because Bozo wasn't around back in the, at the turn of the century. No. I mean, so when that happened, when I've been a product, in, what was he the fifties? I think he started up fifties or sixties. I mean, when, no, you it was know. definitely definitely earlier in the 60s because they had those. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't remember. I actually have a friend that used to be on that show. Uh, so Bob it's, Bell it's, used to go to our church, and he was the nicest man. Oh, Bob Bell. Yeah, Bob he Bell, was yeah. Bozo. He, he was the nicest man. He was literally the nicest man, but he was Bozo. And yeah. it was just kind of amazing. And yeah. Well, when I went to, uh, when I was at Second City uh, in classes, Joey DeOria, who was the Next bozo, he was right. a student there too. So I'd always see like you know 
signed pictures from Joey around in, in his clown costume and everything. Sure. It's pretty funny. And then the guy I knew or the guy I know uh, what played a sidekick. So Cookie was getting older and this sure. guy came in and they brought in some like new clowns. But he's the guy that started where they didn't wear the full paint. They just right. kind of wore the thing here because he was like, we got to be less scary. Right. And it's it's really interesting to read his Facebook posts because now he trains clowns and he does all this stuff. And and he'll write things like when this whole weirdness was going on, he was putting things up like, hey, you know, yeah, there are crap people that are doing this, but some of you are scary and you need to like think about the shoes you're wearing and the right. face you're putting on. You may think, hey, this is jolly. And think about it from a three year old's perspective. You look like, you know. Right. Something horrifying. Well, so then, it's really interesting, you know, when you start getting into that. Now, all the clowns on American Horror Story are horrifying and awful. Yes. Well, they're all exaggerated. They're they're Joker esque. Um, yeah. You know, with the uh, the weird eyes and the obvious distress, and and we still haven't gotten into what all the holes are. There were no holes this week. There weren't any, not that I recall. So mm, what's with the holes? Yeah. Well, we'll find out soon. We so. will. All but, right. Is that it? I think that's it. Until next week. Uh, so follow us on Twitter at Disturbed Pod. Follow us on Facebook, Disturbed Podcast. Uh, follow me at our Southgate. Follow Chris at uh, Blue Box Cafe or Blue Box Cafe 176. And check out the third annual SMG Podcast Marathon coming up October 7th, right here on this YouTube channel or on Capes and Lunatics if you want to see some original stuff there. But if you want to see the thing that's streaming live from the Blue Box, it's right here, folks, right on here on the Southgate Media Group YouTube channel. Uh, or even better, if you can get your way to, to Elgin, Illinois, and go to the Blue Box Cafe, we've got 13 hours of podcast. Time Crash is going to be out there. Uh, they're a Doctor Who tribute band that's phenomenal. Um, we're going to be doing Absolutely. game shows and we've got a, uh, League of Geeks is doing 30 days of horror, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got all sorts of sponsors and raffles and giveaways and all sorts of stuff going on. It's a real circus. So, uh, oh, yeah, will, yeah. It, it'll be a circus. Chris and I are going to be dressed as clowns. Absolutely. Um, putting out our makeup and all yep. creepy. Uh, all right. Is that it, Chris? That's it. All right. Keep staying in communication with us. Give us your theories. Give us your thoughts. We'll put that Facebook thing up again. Hopefully some of you will start writing in. Until episode four, that's it. Time to bring down the big top. <laughs>